Hello and welcome to Pivot Table Text Values Alternative with Filter. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. We've exported some data and it basically looks like this. It's a list of the clients, the tax returns we prepare, and the assigned staff. And we wanna create a report that looks more like this. So of course this is Excel, of course there are multiple ways to accomplish this. We could use DAX and the data model, we could use Power Query. In this case, we're gonna use Excel formulas. So let me go ahead and clear all this stuff out. And let's talk about creating the report labels. So the first step is to create the report labels. Um, what we wanna basically do is get a list of the unique values in this client column. So the way that we're gonna do that is by using the unique function and which column has the values that we want returned. It's this column here. So we select it, close the function, hit enter. And now we've got a list of the unique client values found in the client column. If we wanted them sorted, we could simply wrap the sort function around the unique function, and that looks just fine. Now we need to create the column labels, okay? So to do that, once again, our goal is to get a list of the unique values in in this return column. So we can start with using the unique function on all of this stuff. And instead of displaying these values in rows, we actually want to display them in columns. So we wanna transpose these results. So to do that, we just wrap the transpose function around the unique function, hit enter, and now we've got it. And finally, we need to get these staff uh, people into this area here. So the way that we're gonna do that is with the filter function. So equals filter. Now the first argument of the filter function is the column that has the values we want returned to the cell. And that is this column, comma. And then the next argument is the include argument. That's gonna be an expression that tells this function which rows or which values to include. Um, in this case, we actually need multiple conditions, but let's just take it one step at a time to get warmed up. For now, let's say we want to include those rows where the client value is equal to our client value. And let's just close this function and let's just kind of see what we get, enter. So we get DAR, DMK, DAR. So what's going on? So DIG290 is DAR. DMK, and then there's another one, DAR. So that's why we're getting these three results. So what we really want is to return the staff people where client is equal to our client and where return is equal to the return above. So that's a second condition. So the way that we do that, or the way that we define multiple conditions in this include argument is by wrapping each individual condition inside a set of parens and then using an operator. In this case, we're gonna use the multiplication operator because we are using and logic. In other words, where the client is equal to our client and where the return is equal to our return. If we wanted to use or logic, we would use an addition operator instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a multiplication operator and then an open print, and then we'll define our second condition. So we wanna return the staff values where the client column is equal to our client and where the return column is equal to our return. And then close that. Now, I can anticipate that I'm gonna need to fill this formula down and right through this entire report range. So I wanna take uh, care to include the correct cell reference style here. So as I fill this formula down and right, I don't want Excel to update this column reference F. So the way that I lock it down is by putting a uh, currency or dollar sign in front of the F. That means as I fill it right, F is gonna be locked down. Same thing here, as I fill this formula down, I don't want Excel to change this reference to row six. So I lock it down by placing a dollar sign currency symbol in front of the row reference six. And then finally, let's take a look at this third argument. If empty, what it's saying is, if there are no staff people assigned, in other words, there's no combination of any given client return, then what do we want to send back to the cell? In this case, we'll send an empty string simply by adding a pair of quotes like this. Now I hit enter, 
And now I think we've got the correct combination here. We have DAR and DMK, um, but there are still multiple results. And what we want to do is combine these results into a single cell. So they fit into a single cell. Um, and so we're going to create a comma separated list of these values. So all we need to do to do that is wrap the um, array to text function around the filter function. And then we hit enter and now we get this. This is looking good. And as a side note, if we wanted to use a delimiter other than a comma space, rather than using array to text, we would use text join because that function allows you to specify a different delimiter like a colon or dash semicolon, you get the idea. And now I need to basically copy and paste and paste. And I think we got it. And now we can apply some cosmetics if we want. We could go and type in client. We could do, you know, bold, bold. You get the idea. We could maybe center these. Um, that'd be fine. We could do some, you know, cell borders and whatnot. But, but basically, that's, those are the, the formulas and functions that we need to get this done. So anyway, hey, hopefully it was helpful. Thanks. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and be sure to turn on notifications so you won't miss our new Excel videos. If you'd like to receive free weekly Excel tips delivered to your inbox, please sign up for the Excel University blog. If you'd like to learn more about our structured on-demand Excel training programs, please check out the Excel University website. All skill levels are welcome. This video is a production of Excel University. 